pediatric cardiac arrest. Let's go there. Yeah, so pediatric cardiac arrest. So, Dan, there's 20,000 kids every year who go into cardiac arrest. And if you look at the numbers, only 5% leave the hospital neurologically intact. So if you wow. do quick math, 5% of 20,000 is only 1,000 kids. And we've been told since the 80s that that's the number. But when we finally dug into it and started to realize what we were doing differently between the adult cardiac arrest and the pediatric cardiac arrest, it turned out that it was very obvious what was going on. What was going on is that for the adult, we would stay on scene, move the furniture, pull the guy from the bathroom, put him right here, tell the spouse we're staying here for 20 minutes and then run a beautiful arrest. Nice. That same shift, the next call is a five-year-old cardiac arrest outside by the pool and everything is not done is the same. It's done exactly different, meaning that someone comes and grabs the kid, we run to the back of the ambulance and we say the ER is only five minutes away and we end up just bringing a kid with really bad CPR, no airway management, and we just drop this kid off now that's been 20 minutes um, of really bad CPR and the kid has a bad outcome. And so what I want to just explain to everybody is there's some basic things you can do to make sure that the pediatric arrest that happens in your city, in your community tomorrow, actually gets out of the hospital. And number one is to remove this myth that adult and pediatric cardiac arrest is any different. Look at your protocol. They're the same. Look at the compression rate. It's the same. Look at the ventilation rate. It's the same. All you're doing is you have to convince yourself that that kid should get the same high quality care right where you find them. And if you're, if you're removing this kid from where you find them to go bring them to another place where you think they can do better uh, CPR, then you're, you're gravely mistaken. And let's go to the measurement part. Look back at your cardiac, your pediatric arrest for the last 24 months. Find out how many of those kids have actually walked out of the hospital. That's your baseline. Now you have to say, how do I compare versus another city or versus the country? And if your number is zero, like no survivors, well, then you have some work to do. And the biggest point that I will tell anybody is that the most important time for a pediatric cardiac arrest is the six to eight minutes before you get to the scene. Why? Because that's when you're, you know the age, you can figure out the airway size, you can figure out the epi dose, you can figure out the joules. If you know those three things and people have assignments, you can actually stay on scene for the first three rounds of great BLS and ALS care. That's about 10 minutes. And that kid now has the best chance of survival because EMS is where lives are saved. Listening to this, and I've had the good fortune to you and I've had many conversations. One of the things you're, you know, you're right that the, the code is run the same, but the two things I see are different. One is the mindset. You know, people yes. are just, people freak out about the kids. And you say, you know, there's a lot of kid stuff that really is, they are small adults, but also they're so portable. You feel you can pick them up and you can move them. You can't pick me up and move me to the That's ambulance. Right. One person like that, but a kid, you can. So I think we have to not only be trained better, we have to fight some of those things that are almost brought to us as instincts to be able to do. I love that point. People have these instincts and they feel they're doing something to benefit the parent. I'm going to take child from the ground and take him to the hospital because mom will think we're doing better by the kid. It turns out that's exactly the opposite, right? And the other thing that is more subtle, if you cannot make eye contact with a family member because of your nerves are so high, because you haven't prepared prior to arrival, the parent's not going to trust you. Their anxiousness is going to go up. They're going to start saying, hey, why are we leaving? And all of a sudden, the entire scene is lost. You've lost control of the scene. And so it's not just knowing the dose. It's not just knowing how to place an airway. It's understanding how to control yourself, control your emotions, and knowing how to interact with family the minute you walk off of that vehicle. I think we're focusing on the wrong things. We're looking at that micro level when macro level is, <clears throat> is where the issue is. It is. 